My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, we are installing this thing. Wait for it. Make enough videos, start getting noticed, start getting subscribers, and eventually you get to say what I'm about to say next. Let me take my time. All right, gotta do this right. This was actually sent to me to install and review for free. All right guys, let me just clarify something before we continue with this video so that it can be set in stone now and forever. I have been getting emails from companies wanting me to test out their products, review their products, or do a collaboration with me. And I think it's super exciting. The channel is growing and now I'm starting to get noticed by some people. But I want to make a promise to all of you. And that is, no matter what, the viewers will always come first. And I will always tell these companies that whatever they send me, I, I get to be honest about what it is I'm getting and not doing something for fluff just to sell their product to you guys and it's crap. I will only take on things that I believe in, that I would use myself, and things that have real good quality to them. So I just wanted to make that promise because I want you guys to know that you will always come first. All the time. So what is it? The Oxbeam 6 Switch Controller. Are you not using controllers yet? Are you telling me you still have a spaghetti of wires all over your rig going to different accessories with its own fuses and its own relay and you haven't cleaned it up with one of these yet? One of the very first mods I did to the Jeep when I first got it was install a switch pod. Having a switch pod in a vehicle just makes wiring for all the accessories you plan to do later so much easier. So if you haven't started adding accessories yet, I would suggest to you that you get a switch pod first. Get that installed because believe me, life will be so easy for you. If you already have a lot of accessories and they're still kind of all over the place and you need to clean it up, you can still do so. You're gonna be reducing a lot of wires in your rig and that's an awesome thing because you can manage it all in one unit. So now that we have the Forerunner, knowing that I'm gonna be adding lights and a whole bunch of accessories to it, one of the first things I wanted to do before I started wiring anything up was get a switch pod. I already had this in my Amazon shopping cart ready for checkout when serendipitously I get an email from Oxbeam saying, hey, we would like to collaborate with you. Are you willing to review any of our products? And I'm like, um, Yes. When it comes to our rigs, we are wiring up a lot of accessories to it. We have light bars, we got rock lights, we got windshield lights, off-road lights, we got air compressors, and we have a ton of stuff that we need to wire up. And if you were to just wire all of them individually, well then now you're finding different random places in your cabin for a switch. And on top of that, you got wires just going all over the place and by the time it gets to your battery, you just have this spaghetti of wires coming to the battery. It just doesn't look good. And it makes it hard to kind of pinpoint what goes to what. Now the switch pod solves that issue. You basically have power coming out of the battery in just one line, goes to a module in here, and the module in here it's already built in with fuses and relays and all you gotta do is take the positive and negative wires of whatever load you're putting onto it, such as a light bar or an air compressor, plug it into this module and you're good to go. You don't have to wire that thing up anywhere else. You don't even have to use the switch that the light bar came with. You don't have to use the relay or the fuses that the accessory came with. You just take the positive and negative, plug it up into the module that's in here, then that feeds into your cabin where you have a switch and all your switches are all in one place. All right, enough talking. Let's open this up and see what we got. All right, first up, instruction manual. Everything you need to know, how to wire it up, diagrams, everything, all in here. Next, stickers. All the labels that you're going to be putting on your switches, everything you could possibly be wiring up should be included in here. I mean, we've got floodlights, we've got fog lights, we've got front, rear, side, hood, and welder. All right, are any of you actually installing welders on your rigs? Because if you are, please, please show it to me because like, who needs a welder? All right, next up we have your switches. This is the six gang switch. So you have all six switches all in one complete location. I like this a lot. 
has some weight to it, great build. That's not plastic, that's aluminum. Nuts and bolts, the wire that goes from the switches to the switch panel, brackets for the switches. Some extra fuses, some zip ties. I love when companies provide zip ties for their kids. Like, it just makes it easier. You don't have to go pull out some of your own or buy some if you ran out. Like, it's awesome that they provide this. And at the heart of the system, your switch panel. Basically, this is the brains of everything. Basically, all the power runs through this device. You mount it somewhere in the engine bay, connect it to your battery, and then the battery power goes through this and then distributes it to all of your devices, which is then managed by your switches. So, everything is in here, all wired up and good to go for you. All of your fuses are there, all your relays are there, and then right on the side, this is all your inputs and this is where you plug up all the positive wires of all the devices you want to power up and then the negative part of your devices just goes to a ground and that's all you have to do. It's super simple. Rest neatly inside your engine bay and then... By the way, do any of you ever get the satisfaction of taking something apart in your rig like a panel or like unplugging a fog light or something and then putting it back together and hearing it click into place and it gives you like, ah, that's secure. All right, so let me just show you guys how to wire this thing up so you can see a visual of how everything is laid out. This is not vehicle specific. So this applies to basically any rig, any vehicle that you want to add a switch pod to. If you're already familiar with wiring up stuff like this, then go ahead and just skip this whole section. Don't make this video longer for you than it needs to be. But if you've never done it, then I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So as always, we're going to start with the battery. This is where this thing is getting its power from. So we're gonna be tapping into the positive terminal of your battery. We're also gonna be tapping into your fuse box. Depending on where your ACC fuse is located in your vehicle, that's gonna determine whether you're gonna be tapping into the fuse box that's in the engine bay or the one that's inside the cabin. When I installed the Apollo Intech on the Jeep, I had to tap into the fuse box that was in the engine bay. But for the 4Runner, we're going to be tapping into the fuse box that's located on the driver's side underneath the dash. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop in the control box, the switch panel, the power distribution hub, whatever it is you want to call it. But this is basically, as I said before, the heart of the system. This is where all the power is going to go to. So we're going to find a way to mount this in the vehicle as close to the battery as we possibly can. And then from here, this huge wire that's coated in red, this will go to the positive terminal of your battery. And then coming out of the system, there are also two smaller wires that are red and black. The black is easy enough. We're going to find the ground and ground the system there. And then the red wire, the red wire will get spliced into the ADA fuse. And in this ADA fuse, we will tap into the ACC fuse that I talked about that's in your fuse box. So once you got all that connected, all you got to do next is plug the longer wire into this, this end of this. This will plug in together and then the other end of this will snake into your cabin and then plug to your switch panel, which is right here. So this will get mounted in the vehicle and now you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You press any of those and it will coordinate to the six areas that's on the switch box. And that's really it. All you got to do is plug in the positive wire of your accessory into here and then the negative end grounded somewhere on the vehicle. And then once you have the first one, add the second one, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and that is it. Pretty painless? Pretty much. That's all there is to it. Not hard at all. So let's go ahead and put this in the forerunner. Because this kit isn't vehicle specific, the first thing I had to do was find a viable spot in the engine bay to mount it. There is a large open area just behind the fuse box and I could mount it against the wall. I just have to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of opening the fuse box or get in the way of the gas struts or else the hood won't be able to close. Once I found the right spot, I started with one side and marked it with an awl and then used a punch to give the drill something to bite onto. Next I drilled out a pilot hole and used a step bit to make the hole large enough to fit a rift nut. Now one thing about rivnuts, nuts, I know a lot of people hate using them because they're a huge pain in the butt. Take my advice, invest in a good rivnut nut setting tool and make your life so much easier. You'll be installing rivnuts nuts in seconds with no issues. Once one side was completed, I mounted the switch panel so I can see where I'll be creating a hole on the other side and then repeated the process. 
With the switch panel box mounted, the next step is to route the switch wire loom through the firewall. There's a hole located just behind that reservoir which is hard to show on the camera. This was actually the hardest part of the whole install because the end of that wire loom has a connector that just barely fit through the firewall. Once I was able to push that through, I then routed the red wire through as well which will plug into the fuse box inside the cabin. Now that both wires are routed to the inside, connect the wire loom to the switch panel box. The next step is to ground the black wire. There's a perfect spot right by the battery. The ground wire already came with a crescent connector at the end so you just need to loosen the bolt and slip that connector in and then retighten. Moving on to the inside, I removed the bottom panel slightly by just pulling the ends towards me. With it off, I removed the top panel the same way, disconnected the plugs behind it and took it to my workbench. I found it easier to just take it off completely so I can mount the switch pad brackets on without dealing with stuff getting in the way. I drilled out two holes with a step up bit large enough for the bolts to go through. Here I'm creating a notch at the lip of the panel so that the cord can feed into the dash. I just drilled a hole with a step up bit then used a small saw to trim away the excess. With the bracket mounted, now I just need to attach the second bracket to the switch pad and then put it all together. Now the whole thing is ready to be reinstalled back. From here, plug that wire loom you fed through the firewall to the switch pad and don't forget to reconnect the wires you disconnected and then just pop the panels back into place. Now take the red wire you fed through and crimp the provided add a fuse to the end. I can't show it on camera because it's too tight of a space but you just need to find the ACC fuse in your fuse box, remove it and plug it into the second slot of the add a fuse, then plug the add a fuse into the same slot you removed the fuse from. The last and final step, connect the large wire coming out of the switch panel box to the positive terminal of your battery and you're done. Alright, so I have the aux beam switch pod installed. Everything is plugged up where it needs to be, but before I go and clean up all the wires and stuff, let's just make sure the system works. I do have an extra light here. It's a crap light, but we're going to attempt it and use it. But this is what I mean by this system being super simple. All you got to do is take your positive and negative wire from your accessory or load and then plug in the positive part into one of the ports here and then ground the other one and we have a ground right here. So I'll just plug these in and then I will switch on the forerunner and then press the switch and see if it lights up. freaking cut on my finger. I was underneath the dash trying to pull wires through and something got caught because I got like two slight slices on here. When are we ever going to work on a vehicle and not get cut somehow or some way on our hands? Every time without fail. But hey, it's all done. It's installed, finished, and it was super simple. This was actually easier than when I installed the same kind of system on the Jeep. On the Jeep, I had to remove a bunch of panels. Not only did I have to remove the bottom panels, but I also had to remove the A-pillar panels and then the top panels just so I can route wires all the way up there and then mount the rocker panel switches at the very top. So that was a little bit more complicated. Whereas compared to this one, well, this one's much smaller. It's just that little switch pad and you can pretty much put it anywhere. I decided to put it right to the left of the steering wheel. There's a little ledge right there that was just the perfect place to put switches. So what did I love? Well, I loved a lot of things about this system and that's not just me being biased because they sent this to me for free. I was already looking at this product way before they even contacted me. I had looked online, saw the installs that other people were doing, looked super simple and it fit the bill. I looked at everything about this kit and it was just built really, really well. The box, everything was nice and clean in there. The switch pad was like rugged and tough. I mean, I thought it was going to be plastic and flimsy, but it's not. It's encased in aluminum. So when it's sitting there, it's tough. And when you're pressing at it, it doesn't feel cheap. I also looked at the wiring and the wiring on this thing. Like you can always tell when a product is cheap 
if the wiring is not so good. Like for example, if you get Baja lights, the Baja lights, I mean, the wiring is impeccable. Everything is just nicely sealed in there and it's all organized and routed properly versus when I've gotten cheap lights, the solders aren't that good and the connections aren't that good. They're falling off. But the wiring on this aux beam was like top notch. Everything was really, really secure. All the connections were tight. I tried to pull at it and not coming out. Like even the loom they give you that goes from the box to your switches was already covered and braided properly so that it's not going to get torn or it's not going to get eaten up by metal. It was already nice and secure with a, a, a braided hose on top of it. And then at the ends of those hoses, usually you'll see frays, but they had it all sealed up. And so I couldn't be happier with the build quality on this. They give you everything you need. Everything's already pre-wired. All you got to do is plug and play. They even give you enough wire so that wherever you want to put the switches, it'll reach, which in a way was kind of bad for me because the distance of where I was putting everything was not very long. So I had a lot of extra wire everywhere. Now I could just cut them and rewire it, but I didn't want to have to go through that trouble because the ends of some of those wires have connectors on them and there's tons of wires. And I, if, in order for me to shorten it, I would have to chop it and then solder all the many different wires together again. And that's just a headache. So I just went and wrapped it around somewhere use some zip ties and then tucked it and hit it so that it's not in the way. If you look at my install, it was clean. Like you couldn't even tell there was something new on there because there's not a lot of wires coming in and out of this thing. But where do I think they can improve? There are a couple of things that I wish they had done. The only thing that I saw that they didn't have versus the Apollo Intech that I have on the Jeep is that there is no circuit breaker. On the Apollo Intech that I have from the box, and then to the battery, right before it hits the battery, there's a circuit breaker. So if I wanted to, I can just shut the whole system down and cut power to the Apollo Intech. This one doesn't have that. It goes from the box, there's a wire coming out, and it goes straight to your battery already. Now, could I add a circuit breaker? Absolutely. You just need to get a wire terminal that goes from the battery to the circuit breaker. Then you plug this into that other end of the circuit breaker, and then you have your circuit breaker. So if I wanted to add one, which I might one day, you can. But... They didn't provide it on this one, which it's not that big of a deal. Now moving on to the box part, the problem I'm having is this. How the box opens and where the holes are to mount it to a wall of your engine bay. Well, once you mount it to the wall of the engine bay and it's pressed tight in there, you can't get to the back to take off the clips to remove the lid. So I was having a really hard time just trying to get the lid off because it's pressed up against the wall. So the hinges in the back are sandwiched between the wall and the box that I can't get in there to remove it. So I had to kind of just wriggle it around and finally got it off. I don't know if I broke a tab or something doing that, but that's going to be a pain in the butt. Like if I needed to remove the lid, I'm going to have to loosen the two bolts that are holding the box in place, push it out a little bit, then pop the lid off just so I can put a wire in there, screw it down, then put the lid back on. Right, the other thing that I wasn't really a fan of and it's actually a peeve of mine it's the same situation I ran into when I bought the X-Brite Chase Light, and that is the wire connectors. Two wires, they plug in together, and then you put a sleeve over and screw it closed. And it's secure and it's tight. Here's the problem. Because the ends of those connectors are pretty thick, I had a hard time getting it through the firewall. The firewall hole was about this small, and the connector was the same size pretty much as that hole. So if you already have wires going into the firewall, you're probably not going to have room for this now. The wire itself is not very thick. So even if I have other wires going into the firewall already, the thickness of this wire is not going to really do much. It's what's at the end, the connecting part. So you have to like jam that thing in there. And I was hoping I don't break it because it was just, just enough to get it in. So I was sitting in there with the connector part trying to squeeze it through and then I finally got it through after pushing and pushing and pushing at it and then I fed the rest of the wire through and it just flew from there. I don't know if there's a way to minimize these things where the connections are a lot smaller, they kind of just plug in and they're much thinner because when you have these two humongous cable connectors go together and then this huge sleeve that goes over both, well now you have this cable with this huge sleeve that you got to feed through the firewall and that was a pain in the butt. 
That was the hardest part of the install. Once it went through the firewall and I got it and I was able to reach it and grab it, everything else flew by. And that is it. That's the unboxing, the installing, and the reviewing. Everything you need to know about the Oxbeam 6 Gang Switch Pod. I did a lot on this video, didn't I? I want to thank Oxbeam for sending this over to me and allowing me to install it and give an honest review about it. I highly recommend it. And that's not just me doing that because they sent this to me for free. Believe me, as I said, I was already looking at this and I am glad that everything that I've seen online is true that it's easy to install and the build is great. I mean, there are a lot of switch pod systems out there. Some of them will cost you an arm and a leg. Some of them are super cheap. I mean, you can even DIY one of these if you really wanted to, but I'm just glad that they give you a fully comprehensive kit. So if you don't need anything fancy, you don't need to be able to control devices from your phone or do remote stuff, and you just need a simple system to power up all your devices on one switch pod, this is it. For the price point, for the build quality, the Oxbeam is great and it'll fit on any vehicle. Anyway, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so that we can continue to make content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. <laughs>